Hello, outlets, and welcome to another episode of Shameless Plugs. As always, I am J.A. George, and I am joined by my co-host... Samantha the Writer, <laughs> who is currently tangled up in some cords, but it's okay. We'll yes. be good. We'll make yes. it. Yes. We will make it this morning. It is January. Here we it are. It is January. It is January. How did that happen? Yeah, how did this happen? Uh, I have no idea. It's a new year. It is. It is. It's an exciting new year. Yes, it's 2019, our second episode of 2019. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's a special episode, it everyone. Is. Yay! It's a special episode because, <laughs> as always, well, not as always, but as often, yeah, as often. Mm -hmm. Usually when we kick things off with this is a special episode, everyone knows what's coming. Yes. So, so you, as always. <laughs> if you are a regular listener, if you are one of, if you would consider yourself an outlet, then you know that that means we have a special guest. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are very excited to welcome to our show Steve Netto. So, I'm sorry, Stephen Netto. Sorry, I screwed up already. Oh, man. Screwed up already. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, I, do I jump in now and, and tell you that you left out my middle initial as well? Oh, oh, oh. 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 Hot now, coast hosts fail. <laughs> fail. It's, it's not, okay. it's really not that big a deal, <laughs> but there are also people named Stephen Netto out there, and I don't want to be confused. True. So it's Stephen M. Meadow. Okay. All right. I'm just going to walk away for the rest of the interview now. So okay. Samantha, enjoy your conversation. <laughs> yep, yep. We'll, we'll get through. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, uh, as we said, um, Jay George and I are going to be talking to. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I don't like either of you now, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yes. We're so excited to have oh, you. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. In spite of me screwing up your name, I am glad to have you on the show. <laughs> You're not the first person to screw my name up. Uh, <laughs> names are so tricky. You'd think mm -hmm. that would be the one thing that we could get right since we have to use them every single day, but it's so, not. So I'm going to tell myself a little bit here. Yeah, I, go for it. I, when I saw Stephen's name, his last name mm -hmm. in print, in my head I pronounced it Nadeau. Yeah. So I was all keyed up this morning to get the last name correct. So true. I, I actually had a conversation before we started the show um, to make sure that I was pronouncing his last name correctly. And it caused me to screw up his first name and middle initial. So it's all good. I am officially it's an not idiot. That. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often. It, uh, even, it, it's going to go way back, and my own mother on my birth certificate, <laughs> spelled it wrong. So, wow. <laughs> don't stress. Nice. Well, not nice, but, yeah. My my husband is also a Stephen, and he is a Stephen with a PH, and so it, it throws a lot of people off as well, so I'm I'm quite used to the the name thing. <laughs> what, what's, the, uh, what's the most uh, used uh, pronunciation that he gets for that? Stefan. Stefan. Mm. It's Stephen. Stephen. All the time. <laughs> but Steve with a PH is common enough. How do people screw that up? I, mm, but he gets he gets Stephen all the time. I don't know how anyone gets PH gets a V out of it. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't I don't answer the phone. I answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Very true. Yeah. This, this is yes. This is true. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to give him, I'll have to razz him about that tonight, because yeah. uh, he'll think that's hilarious. I'll be like, are you answering your phone? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, I got a call in my phone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, that's going to backfire on me so bad. It's okay, though. <laughs> I wonder if that's where the name of Vone came from. Like the phone oh. service Vone? Oh, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Ooh. Ooh. I think we just stumbled into the Da Vinci Code or something right now. I feel like... <laughs> I, I feel like we're only a few minutes in and we're already like, like well off the rails. Well, yep, we have we've, we have jumped the rails. We've left the rails. Yeah, we're, we're deep into the forest now. Yeah, and... we're. I don't know where we're yeah, going. I don't know where we're going. So, how about we bring things back on Let's track? Do it. <laughs> sure, Stephen. Why don't you tell us about what kind of writing you do? Well, that's interesting. Um, what what some people have said about my writing is it's very technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I mean by that is um, uh, the only kind of writing classes that I have have been uh, for technical writing. 
hmm. okay. uh, for writing uh, as an engineer, and mm -hmm. which is which is what I am. I'm an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so I did have a little bit of a creative writing back in high school, which was very long ago. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my my formal education has all been engineering. So everything I've written for the last before I started the Soul Web, everything I had written for maybe 15 years had only been technical papers. Hmm. So wow. when I first started writing the Soul Web, it was very technical. Hmm. Uh, and, and meaning that there, it's not overly flowery with description. It, um, <clears throat> it's something that causes the story to move very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is something a lot of people said is that once the speed starts to pick up in the story, it, it really doesn't slow down much. Hmm. Nice. Uh, and, and, and I've had a few people uh, tell me, hey, you know, I really would have liked to know a little bit about uh, that sword that you mentioned in this chapter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, um, hey, you mentioned this quickly. Uh, you told me a little bit about what the environment looked like, but I wanted more. And my response to them has always been, but you you were compelled to turn the page to see where the story was going, right? And the answer is always yes. <laughs> so uh, though though I've had the people, I've had some people tell me it's very technical. I, I feel that it it, it adds uh, I don't know, an air of of. Um, speed to the story. It's not even the right here. Here's an author. He's a horrible word to describe something, but uh, <laughs> it, uh, it it adds it adds um, some. Uh... <clears throat> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so do you think that that means that your writing lends itself a little bit more to the minimalist side of things, or do you think just the nature of the words you choose and the way that you put your sentences together, that's what adds to that speed? Um, I, I've, I would say it's a little bit, uh, with, I think my sentence structure is a little complex, uh, I, and I think for the soul web, I was specifically looking for simpler words. Okay. Uh, because of the audience that I was writing for, um, I'm, I'm a very big fan of uh, The Hobbit. I'm a very big fan of the Harry Potter series because anybody can pick that up and read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Lord of the Rings, which I, I also love very much, it's not something that anybody would pick up and just read through. Uh, Tolkien would spend a page talking about a tree a single tree yes. or yes. a leaf from that tree, which yeah. is beautiful in itself. Mm -hmm. But not everybody has that attention span. Right. Yep. So uh, I feel that I was writing more for someone who didn't have the strong attention span of a uh, Lord of the Rings fan, but more someone who was attuned to the Hobbit. Gotcha. Got it. Uh, mm. if the, I don't know if the mic picked this up, but I was chuckling because... <laughs> As somebody who admires the craft of Tolkien's writing, I never could get through The Lord of the Rings because I just did not enjoy it for some of the reasons that you mentioned. Also, the singing drove me nuts. The singing drove me nuts. So, have you, have you, okay, so if you haven't been able to read it, mm -hmm. have you tried to listen to it? I have oh, not. That's, that's interesting. very interesting. That's a really interesting thought. I might have to give that a try because I did admire the craft. I thought... Tolkien was an incredible writer. It's just it wasn't enjoyable for me. I will have to give it a try listen, because that's mm -hmm. a really interesting thought. The audio book by Robert Inglis, mm -hmm. he, did, he did both The Hobbit and he did Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and they're both fantastic. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I, I am a fan of audio books, of course, because uh, as an engineer, I'm, I'm working a lot with my hands, and I need something to stimulate the artistic areas of my brain while yeah. I'm working. Oh, yeah. Right. So I, I, I'll, I'll listen to books while I'm working, and some of my favorites, of course, Lord of the Rings, Robert Inglis. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, surprisingly, the Harry Potter series are also really good. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've read but those but never listened. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because of that, I, I, uh, the Soul Web is also available in audiobook. 
Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> now, you've mentioned the soul web a, f a few times now, so let's talk about that. Can you what what would you like to tell our listeners, our outlets about the soul web? What kind of story is it? You mentioned kind of touched on the audience, but let's tell them a little bit more about the story. Well, um, the the depth of the story is you've got to go back into history a bit. Uh, the 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 driving events happen a thousand years before the current events of the story. Hmm. Uh, hmm. You take a, an ancient king who, uh, in his attempt to increase his lifespan. Uh, started working with uh, necromancy and, and, and speaking to uh, the underground, which is essentially hell. Okay. And uh, connects with the demon, and through the demon, manages to attach himself to the soul of everyone who has ever sworn an oath to him. Wow. Hmm. So a knight would come and swear an oath, and then immediately makes that knight part of this web of souls. Hmm that the king is using to extend his own life. And wow. now, mortal beings don't own the souls. The souls are owned by the, the afterlife, the, 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 the demons and the gods. And so uh, the demon that he got to help him got a little mad, and uh, there, was a, there was a battle, and he yanked the king into the underrealm. And everyone that was attached to the soul web was yanked in with him. So there was a, a power vacuum in, in the continent with a king, and everybody that was powerful was suddenly gone. Um, so years and years go by. Uh, new kings are, are brought. Um, the, the, the king that died knows that when he returns from hell, because they're not dead, mm -hmm. when he returns from hell, any descendant he might have might be able to usurp the soul web and take control of his knights. Hmm. So he's been murdering his descendants from hell for a thousand years. <laughs> Jeez. So if you think, uh, you, you may have heard the stories that, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm related to, to uh, King Henry VIII. Uh -huh. <laughs> through marriage 50,000 times, someone will say, I'm, I'm related to Genghis Khan. Well, yeah, a thousand years ago, sure. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. no idea who your ancestors are. Right. So yeah. that's our hero in the story. He had no idea he was from connected to royalty in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he's only a library. Right. So he's someone that studies history and studies uh, things like this, and he, he gets thrown as a pawn into a war between the kings of today and the king returning from the dead. Hmm. That, that, uh, go ahead. <laughs> this, <laughs> that's, I, I filled you with a lot of the things that happened in the past, and I'm not telling you much about what happens in the current story. No, the, um, the, the biggest thing, listening to you to describe that, like, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was getting chills. I was like, oh, yeah. my gosh, like, I, woo! It, it's, a really, <laughs> it's a really cool it's, concept. It is, yeah. Like, the, the, the concept is, is incredible. So I, I was just, I think we were both sitting here staring at each other like, yeah. <laughs> whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that, that sounds... Sounds so, incredible. I, I'm gonna make fun of myself a little bit here because I'm like, I'm listening to this. I'm like, oh my god, I want to go play Mortal Kombat right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking this is really <laughs> cool. <laughs> it, it it has what I like about it is that it has an epic feel. Obviously, there is a large scale. There is uh, high stakes here, but. Because of the point that you made about, you know, maybe I'm related to Henry VIII from, you know, that, mm -hmm. from however many centuries and don't know it, it's still relatable. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So it's got the scale, but it's still something that a, a reader could relate to. Yes. Well, that's all that I'm hoping for, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have to admit, I wrote it for a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, a friend and I had come up with two of the characters uh, back right after high school. Mm -hmm. And um, we had intended to do a Dungeons & Dragons campaign 
And, <laughs> nice. And yeah, so he's talking in high school, right? So, right. Uh, and then we, we, our intention was to record the players and then write a book based on that. That's really and cool. We we never did it. That is so cool. We just we never did it. So I I was like, you know what? I'll just take the characters and I just built around them to make this world. <laughs> I. I have to. So you said that you, you know in your in your work you do a lot of listening, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug another podcast, which mm-hmm. we don't usually do, but I think you would enjoy oh, this no, this yeah. podcast. Tell. So um, so this is why I'm gonna do it. So there is a podcast out there, and you're saying that recording the Dungeons and Dragons thing. It's a podcast out of Australia, and it's called Dragon Friends, and that's exactly Ooh. what they do. Um, it's four comedians, and they have no experience with D and D. And they have they start playing the game. They're building up their characters. They have a dungeon master. They're trying to figure it all out. And the entire thing is recorded, and it's hilarious. It's very <laughs> well done. Um, so, Excellent. you know, did so you say dra- Dragon Friends? Dragon Friends is what it's called. Yeah. So if you're looking for something to listen to um, that's in a similar vein to what you're talking about, it's it's pretty well done. And if our outlets are looking for you know a break of course after they listen to all of our episodes yeah duh. um you know dragon friends is it's a great little podcast like i said it's out of australia um and hi dragon friends because i listen to all of your episodes so <laughs> hello dragon friends <laughs> there there's another one that i have not listened to yet but i've heard it's amazing that and god i'm drawing a blank on the name so I will think of this, and it will be posted on our website. But it is a group of voice actors. Oh yeah, who play told... Dungeons and Dragons, and they record the episodes. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of voice actors, so it's like people that you've heard of and you know their voices, yeah. but now they're all playing Dungeons mm-hmm. and Dragons together. Yeah. So. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you've kind of you kind of brought us to a fun place. Yes. Because... <laughs> Oddly enough, uh, Dungeons and Dragons comes up a lot in our um, our cubicle cages. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, excellent. Even though you've it, never played, have you? I have never played. No. Uh-uh. Okay. I, I I get I got made fun of recently. I work I work with engineers, mm. and you would think everybody plays Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, of course they do. They're engineers. Yeah. No, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, someone, someone's like, hey, Steve's, uh, Steve's going to go do something Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like, I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm kind of disappointed that I've never role-playing games. Uh-huh. I played a few times over the years. I tried to run one. It was a Champions, the superhero one, because, of course, of yes. course you know, I'm a superhero geek. Right. So I, I tried to run one, and I got a few games, and people enjoyed it. But every time I've been part of a role-playing group, They've fallen apart. We've, oh, we've done man. Call of Cthulhu. Well, the group went on without me because I had to miss a few times. So <laughs> then I was behind and I didn't want to try to catch up. And then there was a Dungeons & Dragons group that somebody else started. And he was fairly terrible at it. So I didn't want to continue. So it's just like for various <laughs> reasons. I've never gotten to do like a good role-playing group. And I've always wanted to. Ah. I think it's, it's funny because we, we grow up. Uh, we, we get responsibilities, we have things that we have to do, mm-hmm. we just don't have the time that we had as, as teenagers and youths. Yeah. And, I, and I mentioned that I was going to play Dungeons & Dragons, but well, it's something I hadn't done in 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but it, I, was at, I, was, uh, I was at Renaissance Fair promoting the book, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, I met someone, they bought a book, they, we got to talk, and they invited me to play, and I went to their house and I played with them. That's awesome. So, oh, cool. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to it. They've invited me back, so I will be getting back there. But it's they play every other week. It's just it's not possible. Right. I just don't have the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So right. if I can get, get there every other month, I'll be mm-hmm. very happy. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, it's you know I think that is an interesting segue into something that we talk about a lot is. Mm-hmm. Um, Getting the time to write. Yes. Because we all have jobs and families and lives and things that just kind of tend to bump our writing. Yes. Um, yes. You know, so do you have any techniques or things that you use to make sure that you get your writing time in? Yeah. I do. Um, I, uh, I write during my lunch hour. All right. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> sound like much time. But uh, 
much of what you're doing as a writer isn't writing. You're crafting story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you're working out how the story has to go in your head. And when I get to the point, and I'll take notes, when I get to the point where I'm writing, that's when I just crush it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I used to try to write at night, but uh, I find that as I get older, I get tired. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so so uh, during, get during, during my lunch, I, I, I can really, I can put out between 500 to 1,000 words sometimes at lunch. Wow. So, yeah, uh, and, and that's in an hour. Yeah. Because you've been you've been mulling everything around in your head for the last twenty four hours since you've written. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that's basically where I set the time apart. Um, also, I mean that's when I finish a book and it's time to edit. That's what I'm doing. It's during that lunch hour. Yep. <laughs> I again, I'm chuckling, and you nobody could see this obviously, but Samantha was pointing at me while you were talking because I do the same thing. Exactly. I the write same thing. during lunch. I edit during lunch. I will email chapters to myself and I will sit there and just be in Gmail at lunch editing my uh, whatever short story or novel I'm working on at the time. I do the exact same thing. And actually, I I remember reading, if you've ever heard of you, Howie, the author who wrote Wool and Dust and Shift. I have not. They're they're interesting stories. Mm -hmm. It's basically, the premise is... There is a silo in the future where the last remnants of the United States live um, because they have been driven underground and um, somebody discovers that maybe the things that they have been told that drove them there were not necessarily 100% true. Um, Is that a missile silo? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite catch that. That's a missile silo? Um, not exactly. (laughs) It, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but no. <laughs> These silos were constructed specifically for housing people underground. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, it's a really interesting series, and I enjoy it. He's a, good, he's a very talented writer, but he did the same thing. I think he worked at Barnes & Noble, and he would write during his lunch break, and now he's a best-selling science fiction author. So <laughs> it, it definitely can work, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise. So. <laughs> and I think it is. It's about finding that chunk of time that yes. you have. Yeah. Um, you know, so if that is lunch, then, hey, write it up at lunch, mm-hmm. you know, or well, is that breakfast if it's, you know, an hour, wherever. Um, yeah, I think that's the most important thing because as we've noted before, except on this podcast where uh, Stephen and J.A. tend to sound like the same person um (laughs) it's all about what works best for you as a writer so i think that's great um and we always like to share that kind of stuff with our outlets as they're trying to figure out what is best for them yeah so it's it's your god i was about to say something that sounded so cliche so i'm not going to say it now it is what works for you as a writer come on it's your writing journey oh wow (laughs) it's your journey yes your journey and it just sounded so stupid (laughs) that i couldn't bring myself to actually do it so thanks for the peer pressure but (laughs) you just reminded me of something um it's your writing no one else is going to write it like you will exactly um i i've been going to um the National Education Association for New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been going there to promote the book and talk about writing. And uh, the last time that I went, I came up with an idea for a workshop that I'm going to run. Oh, yeah? Um, <clears throat> so get invited back in the spring for their next conference. But the workshop is take out Post-it notes. Hand two Post-it notes to each person. Have each person write an idea of something that would happen in the book. Okay. For instance, uh, J.A. doesn't like tuna. (laughs) Super super simple, just something very small. And Um, a factually uh, accurate uh, statement. (laughs) Samantha disagreed with her husband about where to go to eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simple things like that that you would write something that might happen in a book. So everyone writes two, and everyone hands in one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's say you've got 30 people in the classroom. You've got 30 examples of things that have happened in the book. Mm-hmm. You randomly pull 15. 
So now you've got 15 events for this book. Now, what you do as a classroom is you put the events in order to make the story. Oh, wow. Hmm. And then every person still has one idea on their desk. They take that idea and add in where they feel it fits. Oh, right. wow. that's, that's a really cool so idea. Cool. So I love that. You're building, <laughs> you're building stories that have this basic same framework. Everyone has the same framework with that little one thing that's different. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. The, the the simplicity and complexity that that gives to a writer is blowing my mind a little bit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and if you've got 30 people, it just proves that what you bring to it and your voice is what makes it different. I guarantee you will get 30 different oh, stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is and it's just a, a workshop to help creative writing teachers in their classes. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that's incredible. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just letting that sink in for a yeah. minute. Yeah, yeah. I like want to. I, I like want to go do that just on uh -huh. my own. Like write yes. down like thirty <laughs> ideas on my own. Like yeah. every day, like once a month, like write down a different. Randomly pull them from a hat. Uh -huh. Yeah, and put them all in a hat, and then the yeah first day of the next month, like do my own little nano or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a cool, like, brainstorming thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like to come up with different ways to do things because of the background, of course. Uh, I, I build everything that I'm going to use to promote the book. Uh, I build the book stands that I use when I'm at certain <laughs> places. I learned wow. how to screen print. I don't know if anyone's mentioned that to you yet. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I learned how to screen print, so I was... I was going to do an event, and uh, I looked up uh, screen printing and the cost of it. It was just unreasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned how to do it. <laughs> and and um, I built a stand out of, out of pieces of wood, and, and I, I made my own frames. I, I made my own screens out of uh, the cloth that they used to make wedding dress, like the gauzy oh, yeah. kind of screens. <laughs> Yeah. And I made my own screens, and I made my own T-shirts. And whenever someone buys a book at my event, I give them a free T-shirt. Huh. Oh, that's cool. That is really so cool. As, so the, the, uh, the, well, the price that I make on the book isn't extravagant by any means, mm -hmm. but the T-shirt winds up costing me like three bucks. Huh. Jeez. So it's within, it's within my profit margin. Yeah. Yeah. And now I have someone who likes the book, I'm hoping, mm -hmm. and wearing the T-shirt. Right. Right. Advertising. Yeah. Advertising. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that is. Man. And these are they're just some of the things that, that uh, I've, I've done that I guess has kept me from writing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think, uh, I think it falls under pursuit of craft. I think yeah. that's what it falls under. So yeah. you're good. <laughs> <laughs> now you actually uh Brian Leckley has one. Does she? And Curtis nice. Jones has one. Nice. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. I feel like now anytime I need to like brainstorm out an idea I need to call an engineer. Like yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> I, that's my new like thing. I'm gonna be like, I got this idea and I'm just gonna call an well, engineer. I, I think you guys have my number. So, okay. Yeah, yes. sure. We do. We do. And I now that you mention it, I actually think I've seen pictures of Kratos and Ryan or maybe one of them, if not both, with those t shirts on now that you mentioned that's cool. that. So on Twitter, of course. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, anybody uh, that sends me a picture of themselves wearing it, I'm going to use it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. For sure. Of course. Oh, that's awesome. Man. So so this prompts a question for me because, you know, I've been to your website. I have read kind of your bio and some of your background. And you've got a pretty diverse background with a lot of different things that you've done. How has yeah. that kind of informed your writing or your promotion process? Um, you know, how how has that kind of changed the way you do things or influenced? I guess maybe more so than changed. Mm -hmm. well, I've done so much already. Uh, well, uh, for someone who hasn't been to the website, uh, uh, I was in I was an artist in high school. Uh, I did uh, mural paintings. Uh, I did pen and ink and stained glass. Um, I was also an actor in high school. Um, 
So I, uh, I've been in plays and being on stage is not an issue for me. I love public speaking events. I've fought dance. I was a dance teacher for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I've done so much, uh, of course. I with believe that the phrase is Renaissance man. Um, <laughs> what's that? I believe the phrase is Renaissance man. And since you mentioned Renaissance fair, it kind of all ties together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of odd that I went from there into engineering. Um, because I didn't have an engineering background. And then I, I, I poured myself into engineering and, uh, and studied my butt off to get that degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I find that one of the things that has shown me is that no one can ever tell you you can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you know what? You're, 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 you're an artist. You can't make music. You're uh, an actor. You can't sing in a band. You're, you're an engineer. You can't write a fantasy book. Nobody can tell you what you can and can't do. Only you can do that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's one of the things that's influenced my writing um, is that I'm going to do it. I'm going to succeed in what I put my mind to because that's just the way that I've always been. I, I'm gonna. I started a book and you read that town. Ninety nine percent of people that start a book never finish. Well, guess what? I'm going to be that one percent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I guess what I can say is because I've done so many different things, it's really pushed the levels of determination to succeed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hey, you know what? Everyone makes mistakes, and I've made a ton of mistakes. But if you let the mistakes hold you back, you never can accomplish anything. Right. You've got to keep going and, and do the next thing and 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 I don't know, just stretch, mm-hmm. stretch who you are. Right. Yep. Right. So I'm not sure I answered your question. You did. No, that's no. You, you did. But, uh, you definitely did. Wow. How does it affect my writing? It it it, it it's that that determination. I would say. Yeah. Right. And that's I think part of it because if there's a lot of self motivation that has to go into writing, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's not really a career where you go into work and have two people, three people pat you on the back and say you're doing a great job. You have to kind of have that self-confidence and that self-motivation to get to the end and then you can bring in your your beta readers, your, you know, critique partners, whomever you use to kind of help guide you in the right direction. And I think you still need that determination even once you get that feedback because... That feedback, oh, yes. sometimes it, it guts you. It can, <laughs> yeah, it absolutely can be brutal. It guts you, and it cuts right to the soul. So you've got to have that determination mm-hmm. not to give up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've had my exactly work right. savaged. <laughs> and, you know, some cases I agreed with it. I got it. Mm-hmm. I understood where they were coming from. Some cases I thought they were off base. But you've got to have the determination to keep going when you get that feedback because – you will get that feedback, oh, yeah. and it sucks, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The... That, that one-star review hurts more <laughs> than any five-star review made you feel awesome. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. You know, you may have ten five-star reviews, you get that single one-star review, and it, it hurts. Yep. Mm-hmm. But if you let it stop you, then they win. Yep. And yep. That person that didn't like it winning. I, hey, I've looked at some of the people that reviewed my books... Because I don't, it's it's not as anonymous as people would like to think. Right. Uh, when when someone reviews your books, you know what? I'm not out to to pick and point, but I want to see what they think of other books. Right. So if someone reviews my books badly, oh, what did you think of this book by Edgar Allan Poe? Oh, two stars. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess yeah. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. When I was in college, all my creative writing workshops I took, I used to just call them ego bashing classes because that's all they were. You, you would go in there and it would just be like, just as you'd walk in and you knew that you were just going to get 
Mm -hmm. (gasps) torn apart and then you'd walk out of there and for me i'd walk out of there and i'd be like i'm gonna go hide in a corner (laughs) for a minute and i'll revisit this tomorrow when i've got a fresher perspective on the things were said but yeah yeah, that's what i think of how strong how strong those classes made you oh yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah oh Mm -hmm. and and that's it's totally what it was but there is that there is that moment where you get that like you said that one star review and you're like well Am I that bad? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's all about looking at the work, looking at it critically and saying, mm-hmm. is there something I can take away from this? Or yes. like you said, is this yeah. person just kind of a hater? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you, I've said before, um, write it, read it, hate it, rewrite it. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Because if you don't do that, your writing never never gets to that level that you're looking at. Yeah, right. Um, absolutely right. Uh, one of the reasons I started, uh, I guess I would say, really writing uh, smaller stories is that I would watch, I'm a, I'm a big movie boss, so I would watch a movie and the ending would just be horrible or the, the premises behind the movie are just awful. Mm-hmm. But you can't fix that story. It's a story you can't fix. Someone already finished it. Yeah. But you can do that with your own stuff. Right. Before you give it away and let someone else use it, you've got to hate it. You've got to hate what you've written <laughs> if mm-hmm. it's ever going to be better. Yeah. Yeah. And just if you only take in the positive feedback, you will never improve. Yes. Agreed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, so say, tell, some, tell me something horrible about myself. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well... From what I've learned of you from our conversation so far, you sound like you're a lot like me, so I really can't tell you anything terrible. <laughs> you know, I, I saw that in you, too. I think, you're, I think you're probably a fantastic guy, Jay. Yeah, agreed, <laughs> agreed. It's scary. For for those outlets who are listening to this and going, really, they're that similar? Yes. Yeah, Samantha yes. keeps, keeps like, pointing at me based on things you're saying, the movie buff thing, the yeah. writing mm-hmm. during oh. lunch. Like, uh, yes. So many things that you have said, Samantha is just pointing at me on this side of the conversation. Like, that's you. Yeah, so, it's, holy, it's holy crap, it's you. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now I had that with another one of our guests. Yes. So I feel you did. like you did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I know what it's like to be on the other side of it. Yeah. But it is. It's it's very twinish. You yeah. Guys sure, you weren't like separated at birth or something because Samantha, I'm, I'm sorry for leaving you on. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't mean to do that. No, no, you're, you're fine. It's just, it's funny because yeah. it's, it, it just highlights how different writers yeah. function and how, like, like I said, the two of you have very similar things that you do to get your writing yeah. done, but the stories that yes. you're telling are completely, completely different. different. And yeah. It's, it's, it's fun to see. Yeah, exactly. Because even, even with all of the things that we're saying and hearing that are in common, we, diverge because we have different voices uh-huh. something that we've talked about a million times yeah. on here and that's what's yeah. so important yeah so. exactly if you put us in that writing class <laughs> we would come up with very different stories it would be a fun experience <laughs> with the same it would be. framework yeah, yeah. exactly mm-hmm. exactly yes well i mean I, we've all heard how uh well maybe we haven't but how harry potter is star wars yes yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know um it's the same framework, and mm-hmm. the stories are completely different. Yep. 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 Now your listeners are like, "What's he talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> now they're gonna be they're gonna be sitting there going, "Wait, now I gotta go. I'm gonna go read. I'm gonna go watch. I'm yeah. gonna go. I gotta figure this out." <laughs> yeah. This with his aunt and uncle, <laughs> approached by an old wizard. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's very true. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've talked about what you write, we've talked about your background, but we haven't told people where they can find you. Yes. So oh. where can people find you? <laughs> Mostly on Twitter. No, but, um, <laughs> my, my, my book is available at uh, Amazon.com. Okay. okay. Uh, it's also available on Audible.com. Okay. Um, pretty much anywhere you can buy a book online, if you type in the Soul Web, it'll show up. Nice. Okay. But those are my two main uh, places where people buy the book. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in the New England area, 
I do events all year round. So if you're checking with my web pages, uh, Goodreads or Amazon, I'll have uh, places where you can actually come and meet me and buy the book. Cool. Uh, get a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and if you and if you do that, you get a free T-shirt. Yes. Yay. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I try to, I try to personalize the books uh, when people buy them. Of course, you've already wants it signed. Uh, try to write something funny in each one of them. Nice. Uh, nice. For instance, uh, a pretty goblin is only pretty when you put her next to another goblin. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, mainly, mainly, uh, most of my sales are through Amazon. Okay, okay. cool. Oh, and, and it, for people that are listening, uh, the Soul Web is one word. Right. Yes. If, mm -hmm. you, if you search Soul and Web, you're not going to find it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good but if you, find, if you just if you put it together, nothing else comes up. Okay. Okay. And of course, if you go to our website, shameless plug, shameless plugs, not shameless plugs, shameless plugs, shameless plugs .com, we will have links to yep. uh, Stephen's Twitter profile, to the book on Amazon, yep. Audible, everything we'll else. We'll toss all those links out there for you. So yeah. um, make it make it easy to to get there if you're yeah you know and, and if you've uh, read the book, are... I, I love hearing from you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Cool. Well, right. do we... Uh, I think it's time I for our three questions. I think it is time for our three questions. We need music oh, or like gosh. a da, 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 da. There's my game show. That was nice. That was Thanks. Good. Yeah, Thanks. I liked it. So... Right, door number one. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, question the first. No, yeah. our first question is always, plotter or pantser? I know what the answer is going to be. I know what the answer is going to be, too, and I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually both. Okay. Um, nice. I, I, I plan, I plan the structure of the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I know, I know the ending. Uh, I know the major events that are going to happen. Um, but I, I'm a bit of a pantser, mm -hmm. uh, chapter by chapter. Okay. So I know where I'm bringing the story, but I haven't planned out everything that's going to be in that chapter. Um, for instance, uh, one of my, my newest book that I'm currently working on, a science fiction novel, and I have, I know the ending. I've written the last chapter, but I haven't written how I'm getting there. <laughs> so I, I've planned the overall structure of the book, but I'm, I, I'm pantsing how I'm getting there. Nice. That's a horrible answer, I know. No, uh, no I, I'm a little bit of both. No, yeah, it that's... Sounds but very familiar. It to does, you both yeah. <laughs> And, I, you know, I think to some extent a lot of people are, are both, yes. you know, because there is a certain amount of planning that goes into anything that you're yes. writing. Um, so, no, I think it's a great answer. Makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah. And shockingly, it's not 100% similar the way I do things, but pretty similar. Okay. I'm sorry. So, so, I'm sorry. By your, knows by the your last account, line of their sixth novel? I'm sorry. Yeah, I do know the last line of my sixth novel. It's I, cool. I'm just, I'm cool. just going to throw that out there. I'm just... <laughs> Well, yeah. well yeah, you plan you plan how how the story ends, and yes, the last line of the Soul Web is the first line I wrote. Completely wow. get it. Completely wow. get it. Wow. <laughs> Completely get it. There's like dancing going on. Yes. Usually, I'm the one who dances throughout the podcast. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. Not this morning. I've got the 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 horned hands. Yes. I got my rock fingers yes. up right now. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feel like I should take a picture and send it to you. Like, that's how I feel right now. Well, that, <laughs> no, that I'm all grimy great. and it's not pretty unshaved and everything today, so no thank you. So. Um, so that brings us to question number two. Yes. Uh, where do you get your best ideas? Because ours tend to come in inconvenient places. Yes. Uh, uh, the car, Yep. I think, was, would be where most of my ideas happen. Usually on my drive to work, uh, so <laughs> that it's something that I've mulled over at night, mm -hmm. and uh, my ideas usually aren't uh, full story ideas. Um, it's 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 an idea for the existing story. Mm -hmm. I've got a I've got a plot hole to fill, or something along those lines, and right. that's when the answer to the plot hole will come. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, when I'm when I'm when I'm upset from the traffic or something. 
Yep. That's that's a that's a pretty that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of my ideas on and when I'm driving. And Same. I'm trying to remember them as I go, you know. I call it time traveling because mm -hmm. I don't remember the trip to work at all. I don't remember a single car I passed. I don't know how I actually got to work because I'm thinking about the you know the story the whole time. Yep. So. Yep. But I managed to get there safely every time, so, you know. I'm, I'm alive. alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. And the last question, what do you want to plug? Oh, plugging. It's hard. Uh, I, I, I haven't finished my next book. Um, it's coming. Uh, I, I've just come up with a title. It's Memory Reborn. Mm -hmm. okay. like um, it's a science fiction story about uh, a man... Well, my blurb is, John takes a job in a memory storage facility only to find out that he's the intended storage device and has been all along. Huh. So that's what I'm writing now. I really which, like that is, concept. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's nice because I get to use a lot of my engineering jargon now. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I've got some other authors that I've, that I've read um, and, and I'm, I feel horrible because uh, I don't I don't have everything in front of me. But uh, I read a book called Color Me Confounded that was really good, and I, I I'm not going to try uh, to to say her name. Uh, I will look for it. But, uh, I got it. Uh, it's a recent friend that I've made uh, on Twitter, and, and she's fantastic. She wrote this, um, and. Uh, Color Me Confounded, and it was a story of relationships between between people, and I just I really liked it. So if you if you find the book, it's excellent. Um, I also did some reading for books that got picked up by Kainite Publishing. So Kainite Publishing is a publishing company uh, that Ryan Leslie is actually part of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I, I I read a couple of books from other authors that I met on Twitter. And both of these authors got picked up by Kyanite. So I'm very happy for them. Uh, Michael Nato. Um, he, uh, his last name is spelled the same as mine, except it's N-A-D-E-A-U. Mm -hmm. And he lives like a half an hour from me. <laughs> and I had never met him until I read his book. So uh, Michael Nato, uh, also Phoebe Yawson, was, was also uh, another author that I read in. You, you, the the really scary part is you can't get their books right now. I think both of them might be off the shelves at this point because they got picked up by this publishing company and the publishing company is re-editing them and making new covers. So these books are going to be coming out if they're not out now. Um, but TV Austin and Michael Mito are two other people that I would like to plug. Of course, uh, uh, Ryan Leslie um, has great work and, and you know, Creative Jones is coming out with uh, a uh, a series uh, pretty soon. I don't know how much he's told anybody, but I'm I, excited to see that. Yeah, I've I've had some conversations via direct message with him about that. So yes, very much looking forward to that. Well, going back to to um, getting uh, feedback for your material, I did some feedback for one of Creative's scripts. Mm. And I'm not sure if he was expecting all the red pen on it when he got back. But <laughs> he was very happy to to talk about my suggestions, and and yeah, he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, great is a great guy. But as far as as far as plugging my own stuff, I really don't have as much right now. Of course, there's the Soul Web, um, the Soul Web audiobook. I had I hooked up with a very very nice young man, uh, an actor out of California by the name of David Swanson, and I'm telling you. Um, I did need to initially direct him, but the man did beautiful work. So if if you like audiobooks, uh, give David Swanson's reading of The Soul Web a chance. Okay, fantastic. And I think that'll do it for another episode. So oh, so glad to talk to you guys. <laughs> we were glad to talk to you too. I think I think I was a little more glad than Samantha. No. <laughs> oh, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I didn't get to hear much about your work. When are you guys going to discuss your work? So <laughs> I, I've heard I've heard some of your short stories. Yeah. Where are your books? Where are your books? They're I want books. Okay, so 
they're not out yet. Mm -hmm. And here, okay. Yeah. Do you how do I tell one? the? How do I do this without turning this into another half hour conversation? No, no, go for it. It's fine. So, you got this. so I have. I, I've talked before on the show about how I have a novel that was six, a series of novels that was six books long. Um, and I have written the first one. The first one is done. The first one I was actually minutes, and I'm not exaggerating no. when I say minutes. I was minutes from querying on it, and. Something just did not feel right about querying, and it kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier in the episode, is that, you know, the audience. I have always felt like I am writing about adult themes, but my style is very much YA, um, so oh, skewing yeah. toward a younger audience. So it's just always been one of those things like, God, it are... Am I going to find an agent who's willing to take a chance on this? Am I going to find a publisher that's willing to take a chance on this? And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I had all of the backstory for my protagonist in my head. And the backstory plays a major role in where he is now. And the more and more I thought about it, my, my main character is in his early earliest 20s. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt like I would probably have an easier sell to an agent or a publisher if I were to just tell the YA story, the the background of my mm -hmm. character first. So I am actually okay. working on writing the, the now, yeah, the prequel novel that would now make this a seven book series instead of six. So I'm actually working on the prequel right now, and then I'm going to be querying that. So I am just em Excellent. embracing the YA-ness of my writing and writing the YA story because then, you know, I don't think it will be as jarring when the next story still deals with adult themes. The character is a mm. little bit older, but the writing style is still very much YA, and, it you, you know, you're used to the protagonist, so seeing him a couple years older than he would be in the prequel is not going to be jarring. Hopefully I will have established an audience and they will follow along with the series at that point. So it just, it felt okay. like a more natural fit for me to go back and tell the first story and tr use that to try to break in and get published. But you've written six of them that you haven't published. So is that what I'm no, I have written the first one and I have plotted, I've plotted the other five roughly and I've actually fully outlined the second one and started writing it a little bit, and then I put it okay. on hold to go back and do the prequel. <laughs> All right. So I was going to say, how do you write six and not and not give it? <laughs> not, not have one out that right. I would, I'd be blowing up inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is one that's 100% complete, one that is started, and now a second one that is started, and I'm going to finish that one before I jump back. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah. and and then on on my side, um, I. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got I have two I have two things that are one that is completed and that I'm editing and it's actually um, slightly different than what we usually talk about on our podcast. It's a mm -hmm. modern day fiction that I've been working on since college, mm -hmm. and then I've got a utopia that is nearly finished. Um, it's uh, how you know I took a class in college on utopias, which was incredibly fascinating, especially with all the dystopian literature that's out there, mm. and. Um, but the one thing that they always said was, utopia comes to us in chaos. That's the opening line of majority of utopian novels. They don't tell you how the society is set up. And so I'm writing in the chaos. I'm writing oh, in awesome. where the utopia comes from, how it gets there, the players that need to be involved, and the motivations behind establishing the quote-unquote perfect society. Um, and that one is nearly complete. I, I won't... <laughs> I hit a minor roadblock, but it's a good roadblock. Um, so uh, I, I've been keeping it under wraps, but outlets, um, I am actually expecting. So... <laughs> and I'm due in January, and my second brain has kind of stolen mm -hmm. some of my... Um, creativity at the moment so, so, so we're recording this a little bit in advance by the time this know, airs you may already be i a mother, may already be so. a mother so um yeah so the so with that it's been i'll sit down to write and then it just kind of fizzles out a little bit so that's why i've been kind of focusing more on the editing process because there's for whatever reason yeah my second brain's like 
oh, you were going to do that creative thing? I want it! And it just, like, absorbs it. So, well, yeah. do, you, do you edit as you go? That's something that I do. A little bit, yeah. I, I tend to... So since I'm more on the pantser side of the world, um, my, my process is a little different. I, I tend to write the entire thing by hand, and then I put it into my computer, and the process of transferring it from paper to computer is my first edit. Um, it lets me take my characters and look at them in a different way. It lets me, mm -hmm. you know, look at my um, words and my word choices and my sentences and see what they look like, you know, because paper and screen are very different. So um, my first edit is always the process of paper to screen. And then I print the entire thing after I get it in my computer and I do a full hand edit at that point. So I can go through probably... 10 to 15 different variations of that edit process because it's always Ooh. paper to screen to paper to screen to paper to screen until I get it to the point that I'm really like, yeah, this is, this is where I want it to be. So mm -hmm. that's where I am with my, my modern day, um, novel. And then hopefully the other one after, um, after a little one <laughs> makes an appearance, we'll start kicking in so <laughs> but i was cruising on it that was the thing that was so funny yeah, because you were. i was like yeah i was cranking it out going mm -hmm. for it getting it and then all of a sudden it was just like wait oh, what's my main character's name again <laughs> what where is he going <laughs> so yep but so we i think we've both got things that are in the works right now yeah. it just is kind of uh taken a turn for both of us in, yeah. in really good ways yes um you know, and that's why we keep trying to crank out some of the short stuff and doing yes. the prompt challenges and getting our writing out there in that way, um, because we're reevaluating. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So I am hopeful to be done with mine around kind of the April time frame, and mm -hmm. then I'm going to start querying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might be a little bit of a delay before mine is out there, but hopefully it will be ready to be submitted around April or so. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, what, what, what's left to get here? I'm sorry. I could, didn't quite catch that. What, what have we got left? I, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're done. Yeah, we're done. So very short. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, as always, to our outlets. Thank you for listening to us and continuing to support us. And thank you for our fantastic guest. I'm not going to say his name after my gaffe at the beginning. I'm going to leave that up to Samantha. So... <laughs> I, I, I... Oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I believe it was Stephen M. Nadeau. Nadeau? That's Nadeau. close enough. Yeah. Okay, cool. I got the middle initial in there. See, so together we got his we, name yes, right. We did. Wow. Just... Look yeah. at us. I took three brains this morning. Yes. So anyway, but um, yeah, thank you so much for being on. We loved having you on the show. Um, and we will uh, put links up on our website so people can find you. And thank you again. Great. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Take care, Alex. We will see you next time. Bye.